Good afternoon. Thank you very much for your coming for our round table about harassment in the interpreting. And this topic was a spontaneous one. It was all of a sudden, and we found out when we started communicating. We started our communication and touched different questions. We decided that every, almost each and every colleague uh, were involved in this, and uh, they were silent, and they didn't uh, disclose it to anyone. And our new uh, elected president, Mr. Zelensky, told in the meeting with Angela Merkel that uh, Ukraine are full of very beautiful and attractive women, and we expect now the wave, and we decided to meet here and to talk and discuss it, and we're st going to start with anonymous stories, and uh, I think that our colleagues can uh, tell us uh, the same, but we're going to discuss it anonymously. I don't think that we should disclose say any names and if this discussion will conti be continued we're supposed not to disclose any inf personal information about that we're going to give you the time to get familiar with all these stories you may read them unfortunately the information wasn't presented to the interpreters and uh, it's very hard to see so we're going to wait for people, for more audience. We are going to uh, show this slide during our presentation for everybody to get acquainted in more details with it. And we would like to draw attention what you see uh, on the screen. This is a systematic error. When dolphins save people, we only speak about with people who were saved, but we don't know about uh the his stories which ended in a bad ways because people were people died in the sea i had the association with the minute of silence and this topic is very serious and talking about telling some terminology we cannot avoid the definition and now we suggest you one definition it's in two languages Harassment, the definition of the harassment, this is the physical uh, verbal uh, contact which is not desirable and it repeated systematically. All of a sudden, today I'm not in the, my role as an interpreter in the booth and I'm going to act as a person uh, who's going to disclose the, about the discourse. And to my viewpoint, harassment is uh, its not only in the interpretation, it's one of the uh, chain thing which we can name and I take a risk and name it as a patriarchate. And this is a very extended topic, but I'm limited of time and I would like to tell you briefly about my viewpoint. Uh, the essence here is do you know that uh, somebody i'm told that i'm a feminist and uh, the expression is and the impression is that uh, i'm kind of with a leper or i was uh, sacked from my job in fact i don't think that i should be ashamed of it and uh, more than that i the uh, the idea that uh, feminists uh, do not like males, I don't think that it is correct and I would like to uh, contradict. I think that feminist is a way of women, of females, and we need to improve our lives and we should act as the drivers to it. And I would like to mention that uh, 
harassment and some other problems and issues of females vote today, for example, home assault or the glass ceiling of the career. It is connected with uh, uh, that uh, the community is oriented to at the infantilism of women and females, and this is transmitted from generation to generation during the upbringing of females and girls, and they are taught that they should be weak, dependable, and they should find the protector, and they cannot rely on her own force. And this is a very deep idea, and uh, taking into account my feminism, I very often find that I'm oriented at this, and these are deep, deep issues in our upbringing, and this is uh, force us to be economically dependable, to feel uh, blame, uh, we can call it harassment or some other things. We should, we should, uh, we feel accused, we should uh, ourselves to be blamed. And there is a terminology as a victim shaming because she is to blame. She wore such a skirt and that's why it happened to her. And thanks God, our country is different from the Middle East countries where the uh, victims of the rapes uh, are considered to be blame to blame but to my mind the key moment here in the context of feminism uh, we are women should be more confident in our life and we should act by ourselves and i would like to mention that there is a very good book i read when i was young it is called Crazy Rivers Sonata, and uh, many people don't like it because it is very gloomy. And the author in the middle of this work, of this uh, novel, uh, think about the marriage. It was in the middle of the 19th century, and uh, I interested it in it very much. I'm not going to tell you, retell you this text. If you are interested, please read it. If you haven't yet, but the meaning here is uh, in the patriarch world, the, a woman should have something she should give uh, for exchange to her protectors, and usually these protectors are males, and usually this exchange, this is sex a single time, many, multiple times, and it is considered it is considered that we should trade this, and if we are in position of the buyer and he would like to buy something, but he doesn't have uh, money or he doesn't want to be involved in that, and uh, there is a kind of idea, as we tell it, can we make an agreement? And I would like to express my uh, humble opinion. I think that uh, people who do harass harassment, they try to solve it in kind of different way. They try to get something, for example, the attractiveness of a woman, and, and uh, it, they try to avoid some uh, conventional things, for example, a marriage or some so somebody observed the rules. Of course, there are our colleagues who pay taxes and they do official business, but someone doesn't. And I think that I think that it was enough for me to speak, and I would like to give the floor to my colleagues. Yes, when we got ready to this round table, we planned that we are going to tell you the origin of this problem, that and what we should do if you, in case it happened with you, and what we should do to prevent uh, this situation. But we came 
across the thing that we cannot do anything because when this situation happens, we cannot do anything, unfortunately. And we cannot uh, give you the uh, ideal solution, but we managed to find out the risk factors and we collected uh, several stories and you can see the uh, details. This is the uh, work uh, on location when you uh, some events with uh, drinking, with alcohol. There are different clients, uh, coal miners, metallurgists, and it is a tradition in our country to uh, use hot drinks during the dinner and this is not do not positive uh, influence on the male uh, solar interpretations there hasn't been any single story when uh, the woman was uh, attacked when she worked uh, in pair with the male this unfortunately happens when an uh, interpreter, a uh, female interpreter, is alone. And of course, there is a kind of a stereotype when this considered the graduates uh, are considered to be the future seekers for uh, the foreigners as a husband. And these girls are considered to be uh, such seekers. And what can we do with that? What can we do with that? We cannot tell that uh, what can we do exactly when it is happening, because situations are very different and can be very different, but we should uh, be on the safe side. And of course, we cannot be on the safe side totally, but I think it can reduce the number, mitigate the number of the uh, reasons. And this is not from my experience, but also from the experience of my colleagues too. And uh, of course, people are not eager to disclose such stories. And I really, uh, these are experience of my close colleagues. And of course, it's uh, it is not a habit to speak about this. How can we avoid it? This is we should work on the agreement or after we our services was paid, prepaid. When we use agreement, we are protected uh, in the in the agreement contract. We sign as the private entrepreneurs. We can include different clauses, and uh, for example, we can include. Uh, such a clause, and we can use different ethic codes. For example, we can use codes of international organizations, and this is, or we can consult with a lawyer how we should formulate this and include in our, taking into account our legal system and taking into account that we have certain uh, acts, legal acts, we can refer to in our agreement. Uh, also, we should have the complete information about the event we're going to interpret, and uh, it can uh, ev it can help us to avoid different issues, including harassment. And of course, if you know that uh, an interpreter alone goes to some kind of uh, dinner to the restaurant, and this dinner starts at uh, 8 and ends at uh, midnight, and someone should drive her in her own car back. If we know this beforehand, logically, we can inform our client that we cannot accept such conditions, and we can uh, call a taxi, and the client should pay for it. Of course, we shouldn't tell that we are afraid of harassment, but if we know about that beforehand, we can uh, think what we can do. We also mentioned that uh, this kind of situation can be on a solo interpretation when an interpreter is alone and when people work uh, together. It is includes uh, not only in the booth of for simultaneous interpretation, it also includes the whispered translation and uh, consecutive translation, interpreting. 
and it's very heavy in our country to persuade the clients that they need uh, for consecutive interpretation more than one person. These are this creates more comfortable conditions for work and uh, gives a kind of protection. And of course, when you are face to face with the person, different unpleasant situation may situations may occur. Next item is the dress code. I don't want to use the rhetoric that hey, dude, you are to blame because you uh, wore the short skirt. But if our dress can awake any ideas in our clients, well, of course, we can put a kind of risk to us. Of course, it should be a strict dress course, uh, dress code without any extremes requirements, but we should think about the length of our skirt and so formal communication and I think it's very important and more important than uh, the length of a skirt because uh, psycholog psychologically people when they would like to establish contact they mirror reflect each other and they try to adopt themselves to the communication way and I think that we do it more and we are more opt to do this if we start this talk with some ambiguous and some hints, we can support that without being aware of it. And should we, if we understand that it happens, we should switch on to neutral. And it really helps, and your interlocutor really becomes neutral too. Uh, disclosure. This round table is a part of disclosure, what we think about, and I think that we should tell about that. Of course, this is a personal business of every person, but uh, I think that uh, this problem should be disclosed uh, because it's not in our occupation, in our job. Uh, we should make this issue public. Uh, the last uh, issue we have, this is the information of the law enforcement bodies. Uh, when people, your clients, do not understand the, or people do not understand the polite refusal, or if they see that you are really intent to call the police, uh, they should they understand that they shouldn't act like this, and even if you're not going to really call the police, uh, it may help you to. I took, so I'm going to speak about what you don't, uh, shouldn't do. First of all, you shouldn't, you shouldn't react, and you shouldn't be emotional, uh, being rude, in response of the root uh, propositions and you should be aware you should uh, identify this moment and you should understand that uh, you shouldn't hurt a person because it can vice versa make this person more aggressive where is the interpreters it's very important for us and uh, if something happens, it may be useful. You shouldn't be neutral if somebody puts a hand on your knee, on your lap, and you sh you shows that everything you show that everything is fine. You shouldn't do this. You should react. You should respond, respond immediately, and you should uh, tell a person that uh, you shouldn't do this. Uh, there are some kind of uh, propositions to mention that you are married and you uh, unfortunately it doesn't work and uh, your wedding ring doesn't save you, cannot sa save you. Uh, you shouldn't be silent, you shouldn't uh, 
you shouldn't you should disclose this sensitive issue and very often people who try to harass you they are on a higher position and they uh, have lots of leverages and they can influence on your even life and they can spoil your career promotion and of course it is not pleasant to talk about this but you should find a solution find a way to disclose it and it can be a kind of factor which can uh, favor the idea of our association and the interpreters association will start doing it and the last item i would like to mention we have lots of uh, uh, interpreters female interpreters they are not married and they can fall in love with the person they work with but for the rest of their uh, married colleagues it wouldn't be very useful you should very strictly separate the personal from your work and you should make a border that uh, here you have work and here you have personal relations uh, not to uh, foster the idea that you can be in easy attitude with interpreters and i would like to hear tell you about the situation when you uh, if the community community favors this idea it can uh, reinforce it and uh, so we don't want to sit here as a talking heads probably you have some stories probably some of you managed to uh, what happened to you? What you faced with? I had a story, one of the... Uh, it was a military project. We had a team of 20 interpreters and we had five girls there, females there, and uh, it was militaries. I mean the NATO country, the member of NATO, and the plant in Feodosia, Crimea. Then were guys from Tula, Russia, Nikolaev, Ukraine. And there were lots of uh, workers, and the senior translator gave me a partner, and we worked in the territory of Nahimovsk vocational school. And uh, you should took time in, in the evening to get ready for the lectures, and I had a partner and we shared our work and for one day I uh, interpreted and in the evening I had 35 pages about the uh, machine gun and I should uh, do the resume out of that and uh, I should uh, interpret uh, translate it and I at the same time I had another project and I uh, had to travel to Moscow for two days and I with the lieutenant general agreed and he agreed that I should find a partner and it was a problem with the uh, problem with the senior translator one of in these visits uh, in Moscow for two days and the client wasn't a military and uh, I got back and uh, what did I at that time and I prepared the uh, folder and I prepared the uh, notebook, uh, pencil, and uh, white sneakers from the hotel. And I showed it to my senior translator. And I told uh, his name was Evgeny. And I told, uh, here's the folder, the uh, pen. And he saw these white sneakers. And it was the last warning from my side that he shouldn't uh, assault me, shouldn't harass me. and. I informed him that if something happens with me, I uh, refer to the, his uh, management and it will be solved. Thank you very much. I would like to uh, open the discussion. We would like to listen to your voices and please find uh, time. And uh, we gave you the definition of harassment and we did it intentively because uh, some root prepositions, it's not harassment, but, for example, 
if you address less. Okay, honey bunny, you do a good job. We should we should pers uh, have an attitude to that as a harassment. And if you want to share such kind of stories. Actually, I have had such experience in the very beginning of my interpreting career. This was quite a new thing, unexpected thing, and an understandable thing, because actually I've thought that the, I provided no chances for such uh, for such behavior. That's why always when I present myself, I say I am the leader. I am uh, interpreter like the male one. Uh, but it's more the question of Russian language, uh, not saying that I'm female interpreter. Mm, one of my brightest experiences, I have worked with one of the military enterprises in Belarus. I didn't work in office. I I worked uh, in some, with some like emergency case. I have received uh, prepayments and some payment, and so I have received business trip for Latin Latin America. And there was situation. Uh, there are eight military former military persons, one and me, one female person, my she was a man, elderly man, and he and afterwards I understood that he uh, he is in love of different women. So, but I flew uh, flew like interpreter from one language to another. But also, I have had some secretarial man, uh, functions. Harassment started even uh, in in the airplane. So, ten hours of the flight, I I sat near him. And he tried to just to make everything cozy for me, comfortable for me, even when I was sleeping. I tried to just refuse it, to ignore it, to just uh, have distance between us. So, and then a hotel uh, and uh, different rooms, different suits. And here we have soft connection, connection rooms, of course. And he calls. So, uh, so he calls. I come to his room. We start communicating and we start a dialogue and he starts to intervene into my private um, limits, my private borders, just having the minimum distance between us. He has had a chance to say, oh, you are a fool, I just didn't mean it, but nevertheless I un decided to just uh, make everything clear, even if he calls me a fool. That's why I strictly said uh, I don't uh, remember how I have said uh, what is, was his name, but I have said, Mr. Please go away from me. I will sit here, you will sit here, or I will go to my room then and we will communicate later only where I should uh, be uh, for performing my uh, working functions. So it worked. It worked actually, and, and afterwards, uh, I have spent a week there, and he didn't do anything for me. The most important thing was uh, the most important thing for the interpreters, female interpreters, the beginners, is to to give a chance to a person to call you a fool because I that I am not about this. It's better than to have a worse situation. I think. That what I have heard that the, the most important thing was neutral tone and self consciousness. So I don't think that neutral tone. I have had real neutral tone. Actually, I was really aggressive. Really, I I behaved aggressively towards him. I said directly, strictly, but I didn't feel into emotions, into just female emotions. No, I was very aggressive towards him. Uh, yes, we didn't want to have this physical harassment uh, and we don't have to share such pity situations and stories. Some similar advices, uh, maybe recommendations to have uh, what to do when you in this situation? Because uh, when you're in this situation, you understand you uh, you understand that you got lost, you know, that uh, you could be blamed and you're accused that everything is bad, uh, maybe from psychology. <laughs> I was lucky. 
In fact, I faced with the situations that uh, it was just in the beginning of my career, I was a student and I uh, took different jobs and I had two cases. The first case was, it was kind of physical harassment. I worked with a group of builders and constructors in Dnipro, Dnipro uh, Ukraine, and they came to uh, repair a kind of bridge. And I was a student that I would like to extend my experience. And uh, in a day, I worked with them. And uh, in the evenings, they invited me into a restaurant. And the first day was good. And the second day, somebody touched my uh, butts. And I my first response was very simple i uh said that once again it happened i'm going to address the police and i would like uh, don't want to extend to continue my job and it helped and in working conditions in the industry uh, we continue to work this but it was in a polite form and they uh, did not manage to uh, repeat it, but I stopped working, uh, stop, stop, continue working with them after. Uh, the second case was the another. I was a fresher uh, after I graduated from university. It was a private uh, client, and uh, I uh, sat in the car, and uh, my client put their hand on my lab, but I uh, took it away and I told that I have a family. So can I applaud for your, uh, that you are so brave, Christina. Thank you very much for your story. Well, can you see how uh, we categorize militaries? We can see uh, the start of the career when an interpreter is young and she doesn't understand. So? If we speak about such typical situations, I would like to pay your attention to the alcohol topic. So restaurants, it's not only relaxing uh, environment, speeches, but also it's very, um, a lot of times, abusive usage of alcohol. It could be possible not only in the evening, but some of them start even uh, from the morning or at noon. So my personal opinion, for those who drink so much, you should stay far away in your life. It's not great for you, uh, especially in your working time. You don't should not drink during your working uh, time. And colleagues have said several cases when they uh, failed uh, experience situations of verbal or physical harassment. But I think that this is about uh, people that don't abuse uh, alcohol so uh, don't abuse any substances so those are people that are adequate people that under understand but if a person drinks 200 uh, grams of vodka it's very difficult to, to speak about uh, ad uh, adequacy so you should mention it you should understand it that a person uh, drunk person behaves very differently from a um, person that doesn't drink so maybe you should not work and i think not only my personal opinion not only in work but in personal life you should not deal with people that drink a lot but if you have to do it you should uh, just try to find information from different psychologists narcologists or those who are experienced in, in, in it how you should behave uh, with a person uh, drunk person severely drunk person i need to say that i i know by myself when you work a lot uh, our we being choral interpreters uh, for us it's very difficult to think about logistics anna has said today you should think how you to go with from this uh, hotel in Nova uh, um, runway. So you should think about glossary, you should vocabulary, you should think about some other professional issues, but we just lose this topic, lose this problematic issues. I just really understand that I never um, w uh, look and remember faces of drivers. I just, I'm fully concentrated on 
uh, on the on my work and this potentially dangerous station maybe someone could share their ex uh, experience so i have very little experience of oral interpreting it was just in, begin in the beginning of uh, after graduation from university but so just an assumption maybe it could be some um, just helpful for someone just remember being a student of English, uh, language and literature department and we have uh, had some uh, projects, we shared information about these projects and uh, and work. So we shared telephone numbers, that telephone phone phone numbers, uh, and some code words, uh, secret words. But always, if I go to any restaurant, uh, to parties, or any other events, I just in three hours I should have been. Uh, finish the work. I should have finished the work. If not, if three hours uh, and uh, I still work, so then we make a, like secure uh, a, a call to secure to ask if everything is okay. So maybe we should do like this. Maybe for such events we should engage or involve some uh, people, friends, for to secure and to call and ask this question. And I have mentioned several times that usually people have, uh, have this experience in the beginning of their career, and and I'm not an exclusion. And when they have uh, started to prepare for this round table and collected such uh, cases, and they have heard from uh, different colleagues that this why I decided that I'm not I don't want to be an oral interpreter I choose um, written translations because I don't want this stress and this is one of the major stress factors and it's uh, shameful it's pity that such happens and potentially good interpreters just deny to be interpreters due to these situations but of course it's clear that her uh, that more um, there are more chances that that your student is an object of harassment than another person. But I think this question should be raised in our universities uh, and when in our universities um, interpreters ethics issues are uh, trained are taught so you should come you should learn you should ask questions you should uh, support your students and colleagues so just an advice uh, just uh, just wish I, I could see that a lot of people speak about you share these cases you share this information that you shall support is very important in the topic of harassment please share maybe some information about it. So I would like, of course, it's very important. This topic is very important. It's very important to to speak loudly about it. To speak. Of course, we could just um, have a general picture. We could just have. Um, uh, uh, we could have, for example. Uh, support groups or just share some cases, personal cases. I don't think that it doesn't matter which exactly words have been expressed or uh, how physically harassment was performed. And we should not be focused on physic on physical harassment because we should remember that this we speak not only about specific uh, movements or uh, just violation of private limits, but we should not forget that not only uh, female. Mm, interpreters could be uh, objects of harassment, but also male interpreters <coughs> could be could become object of such unprofessional situation. Uh, so maybe we could play with the words in Russian like female or male interpreter. But I mean that um, developing status of our profession could influence greatly on um, perception of this profession. And it doesn't matter how we call the things, but we should remember about our identity, about our professional status. And if we have support of the professional uh, community, it will form such um, a respectful status of this profession and maybe this uh, notion will not be even a subject of discussion i hope so again we come and return to establishment of the association of professional interpreters the higher 
uh, we consider ourselves the higher, the more we respect ourselves, the better all interpreters will experience. So thank you very much, Sloan, that you uh, touch again. Uh, the issue of that not only uh, women uh, could be objects of harassment. I don't want that it could be like an um, attitude that we try to have a war of uh, success now. Maybe a present man would like to share some information or your experience of harassment. Because my colleagues told me when they didn't receive job uh, for uh, interpreting because uh, um, also all criteria, they fulfilled all criteria except of the sex. Because they are men, they just have been neglected with the work. My my story. Ah, it's not more about experience of men, and of course, I, it's clear. But but just I wanted also to say it. What have said? Uh, what Sveta has said. Uh, very often, uh, interpreters, not depending on male or female, speak about their clients from the position that he or she is my employer. My status is lower. No till we can perceive ourselves with a lower status, we will have this um, slavery, psychologist slavery attitude. We should change this in our brain, in, because the slave is the person that should just um, fulfill all wishes. We are not partners. We are equal. We are equal persons. and. This uh, this uh, slavery psychology. I meet very often uh, in majority cases and the former countries of Soviet Union. Because yes, some we have. I have had some such cases. Maybe not harassment cases, but some tries uh, for flirt from other foreigners. Because it, but they could be explained. The foreigner is in another country, and a nice girl just cares about him, and maybe there could be some. Uh, signs of love and maybe some relations. No, it's not the case. But I, but this, but I really have had these cases uh, from the side of directors, uh, heads of different delegations, and others. So in this, in this form, and the most important thing that we should remember, we should create in uh, our, um, we should understand that we are equal with our clients because they are not there providing to us uh, some work, but we provide to them the services and we receive payment, we receive compensation for this work. I just would like to remind you, you, because a lot of colleagues didn't tell the stories for uh, for anyone for 10, 15 years. They didn't share this information with anyone because you could be accused. You're, um, but I need to remind you that uh, we, we are not um, uh, we are not victims, and we have we didn't ratify Istanbul Convention, and we have some home violence cases, but we are not we can't be blamed for it. But I would like to remind the question, uh, asking a man, maybe someone of you would like to share any uh, cases. <coughs> Just uh, that was a phrase. The military. Uh, men and working with uh, military specialists and sometimes I work with law enforcement bodies uh, and I could not find no and I know just really notice that such cases happen not depending on uh, nationality on the country and but maybe in NATO country you could receive administrative um, charge but in our country it's considered to be uh, normal adequate and it's normal to say or good one or just to give a hug give a kiss for um, I didn't, I don't know any other case that goes beyond these mentioned things. I, didn't, I don't know and I, uh, I didn't ask how female interpreters feel them, themselves uh, in such attitude and behavior and whether they in, uh, just um, promote this behavior or not, but from 
but from uh, the side of our military specials, you should understand their nature, that this is military person, that they uh, just are trained to go into the war, to dominate, to uh, win. And from their side, it's like perspective of being a gentleman, of being polite. It's my point of view. I would like to add, first of all, you should ask your female interpreters, your female colleagues, because I have had a talk with my with my colleague from one of, the, not from Ukraine, from one of the neighboring countries, and he has been working for 20 years. And how six months ago, he just asked by, she, uh, he, um, he was told by chance, uh, one of his uh, colleagues, and he understood that it exists, and he asked one another and the third, and he understood that it really exists. And you could just don't know about it. It's one of um, interesting aspects with female interpreters. If we just try to uh, inter intervene and include feminatives, I don't know. So being a linguist, I can't say that uh, I can't just ignore the situation. So maybe we should uh, discuss the situations, the harassment situations, uh, some harassment cases of the man. So maybe you have been denied with the order, with the client, or or any other. I would I would like to give a microphone to to, to men. So so regularly I have such experience when there is a there is a client and criteria of the client is to have a female interpreter and I very often uh, hear that you have a great CV but the client wants a female interpreter uh, but I have never felt um, just uh, uh, abused or I uh, because sometimes I understand that uh, in some formats, female participation is more important. Uh, such formats could be the following ones. For example, delegation from uh, from another uh, just uh, Muslim country delegation comes, and presence of a female interpreter is just creates uh, creates an environment. What? That, that's the sense of the uh, the girl creates the environment, and so it's uh, like a chair in the cake. When they say um, a girl creates the environment, no, the atmosphere. I don't say that she's the object of sexual uh, harassment. No, she she just comforts, uh, soothes, uh, maybe makes uh, tunes the emotions, even if she's dressed uh, appropriately, officially, and she has a skirt lower than her knees. And when I'm told that I would like to have, uh, and when I'm told that I would like to have a girl and a, a boy, I say, okay, if you have a, um, if you have a criteria for a man, please tell. Thank you, thank you very much for your opinion. I understand clearly what you mean. Actually, all the um, wording everywhere is very different and uh, it's very similar. And I'm always surprised when I hear it. And uh, when I that I'm told that uh, I need I need a female interpreter. And when I uh, listen to it, told that let's drink for the beauty of this table. And you you are just officially dressed, and there are ten uh, men around. But still, uh, we we don't want to discuss, and that's all. We want to start this uh, discussion, and we want to continue it. Uh, this is very good so, uh, just a uh, phrase to finish to wrap up our discussion. I'm not sure whether I expressed correctly my opinion, but I would like to say if I'm uh, being a, a human, being a representative of this or that profession, if I'm sure that I could rely on, on the community, on the association that, uh, that would support me, would, would protect me, even if, there are, if this association doesn't have any legal levers, but uh, it's united association, it's very important element because this element gives me uh, essence of um, safety, safety of my life, of my profession, and also increases level, uh, uh, increases status of this profession. And I always uh, say it, I always tell it, because I think we should not forget about it. We should repeat it con uh, constantly because 
then we will have maybe more actions towards establishment of such a station. Thank you. So let's talk about actions. This is the last slide, and here are our contacts. If you have any uh, experience and you, uh, you are ready to share uh, this experience and you are not comfortable to share it with here uh, and you would like to send, we will be glad to receive these messages from you through this information, uh, personal cases. Maybe we will de develop uh, some guidelines, some base that will be basis for the future ethical code and we will sure, ultimately, we will do in this or that format this ethical code because we should create something, some entitism that will unite all interpreters and, will solve, and we hope that we'll solve this problem and we'll solve not on, only the problems that we have raised during this, uh, the last hour, but all other problems that exist. Thank you very much and we are looking forward to your emails and any messages you have. 